Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Gary Blackwood. Welcome back to the vlog. We're here in London in the beautiful Victoria Casino on a cold Wednesday, January night. I've left my intro recording camera at home, so I'm gonna have to get straight into the action tonight. Sorry about that. I know you guys love the long intros. I've also left my phone holder at home today as well, so we're gonna have to improvise with this double battery pack holding everything in place. Owen and Neiman Rampage would be disgusted. It's also gonna change the camera angle just for tonight. Hopefully you guys don't mind. The game starts 2-5 and then immediately the straddle is going to go on. In our first hand of the night, I'm going to blind raise to £21 under the gun. Don't ask me why 21 and not 20. Looking down at pocket twos here, pretty good blind raise hand, but everyone just folds. This is kind of unheard of to get a walk when it's a blind raise. That's the sign of a passive table, which to be honest, I'm okay with. It means more raises for me. Our first real hand of note comes after about 30 minutes or so. I'm in the cutoff with ace five offsuit and raise to £30. Now this is okay in a two blind game, but given the straddle on that now becomes a three blind game but we do have the world's biggest knit in the big blind so it goes back to being okay the straddle is going to defend and we go heads up to the flop which is king jack six rainbow he checks to me and i decide to bet big on this flop i bet 50 pounds he takes a few seconds and then he makes the call the turn is an ace queen completing 10 and when he checks to me again it's time to barrel off i bet again for 130 pounds as he is tanking I decide I'm going to bet £425 on almost every river, but he does just let it go. The temptation to show a five is nearly overwhelming, but I managed to control myself. Then again, I have just shown the world on the internet I had ace five, so what's the difference, I guess? I'm a little bit disappointed that he didn't call the turn because I wanted to blast my hand again on the river. Still, though, it's a good start to the night, up a few bucks early on. And next up, I've got 10 nine of hearts in early position. Under the gun is limped in for £10. I am next to act and raise it on up to £45. It falls all the way back around to him and he makes the call. Heads up to the flop we go, it is king nine six rainbow. I've got second pair and a backdoor flush draw and a backdoor straight draw. So I decide to see back my hand for 35 pounds and he makes a pretty quick call. The turn is the eight of spades, brings a flush draw now. He checks to me and I decide to just check back. To the river it is an all suit three, nothing really changes and he bets out for 70 pounds. I don't love it, but does he really have much king x in his limp call range pre-flop? It's more likely he's got a hand like Queen 10 or Jack 10 or a misdraw of some kind. So I make the call. He's got Ace King of Spades. That is one way to play it, my friend. A little on the passive side indeed is this table. Moving on, just five minutes later, I am on the button with 9-8 of diamonds. There's one player in the game who's not straddling. That's obviously completely fine. I raise it on up to £20 and the big blind puts in the three bet to £75. I'm going to go ahead and make the call here. We'll go heads up to the flop, which is Ace-8-5 with two spades. I've got second pair. And again, I've got some backdoor draws. I wonder if second pair is going to cost me money again. The big blind is going to see bet for £75 and I'm going to make the call. The turn is the four of diamonds. I now pick up that flush draw. My opponent checks to me and I think my hand is a very, very clear check back. The river is a king. Don't love that one bit. The big blind checks to me and again, I think my hand is too strong to bluff here, although I don't expect to ever win. I do check it back and the big blind sheepishly turns over queen jack of hearts really surprised to see that he's kind of let me win the hand here i think one more bet on the river i'd absolutely have to fold like i said this is a very passive table indeed and next up i look down at king jack offsuit with a heart in the straddle quick spoiler alert we can see here that i've got the jack of hearts i think i've got the king of hearts which is really important for the rest of this hand early position is raised to 25 pounds the cutoff makes the call and i call in the straddle we go three ways to the flop, which is nine, eight, deuce with two hearts. We check it on over to the cutoff and he takes a stab for 50 pounds. I've probably got a fold here, but I am going to go on a little adventure with my king of hearts that I think I've got in my hand. I make the call. The original razor gets out of the way and we see an offsuit 10 roll off on the turn. Once again, we check to the cutoff and he bets out again, this time for 75 pounds. I've now got two overs and an open-ended straight draw, and I can rep hearts on the river if a heart rolls off, so again, I make the call. The river is the deuce of hearts. One of the great things about this is that if he's got 9-8, he's also just been counterfeited. So I lead out here for 325 pounds. He takes all of about 10 seconds before folding. I look back at my cards, and yep, oh my god, I've got the jack of hearts, not the king of hearts. It probably doesn't matter. I'm probably supposed to just fold my hand on the flop anyway, but what a fun adventure that is. All right, next up, I pick up queen nine suited in the hijack. This is a power hand for me in this vlog. I raise it on up to 30 pounds. 
The straddle is going to make the call. He's the guy I bluffed in the last hand. And we go heads up to the flop, which is 966 with two hearts. He checks to me and I decide to see about my hand for 30 pounds. He makes a pretty quick call and the turn is a straight and flush completing seven. He checks to me and I decide to just check back. To the river, it's another seven. Really not a great river because hands like seven, eight and 10, seven now beat me. But on the other hand, he's got a lot of hands like deuces, threes, fours, fives, which now have to bluff. He bets out for 115 pounds. I am deep in the tank here. Do I want to call this? Do I want to be just disciplined and fold my hand? I take a quick look at my opponent and he's looking at me, not the board. He is a recreational player. And generally when recreational players do this, it's a sign of weakness. So I do go ahead and put the money in. I also say that I've got a nine because like I say, I'm pretty sure he's bluffing and I want to give him the opportunity to not show his hand, to just go ahead and muck it. He does say that nine is the nuts here and mucks his hand. It's a nice little river tell there for me. And spoiler alert, we're gonna have a lot of live tells later on for much bigger pots. Just wanna quickly say though, a lot of you guys will be saying, you know, you should make him show for information and stuff. I play here once a week. What am I gonna do with this information? I think it's just nice to be nice versus recreational players and allow them to muck their hands if you think they're bluffing. That might sound a little patronizing, but I do think it's nice to be nice. But anyway, moving on next up, I've got Jack nine offsuit in the straddle. The cutoff is limped in. The big boy makes the call and I check my option with my Jack nine offsuit. We go three ways to the flop, which is ace, jack, nine, rainbow. Really good start for me here, flopping bottom two. And I lead out for 30 pounds. The cutoff is going to make the call. The big blind gets out of the way. And the turn is an absolute brick. It's an offsuit deuce. I bet again for 75 pounds. And once again, the cutoff calls. The river is a six. This is a really nice run out for my two pair. I only really lose to ace, deuce, or ace, six, or some slow played flop and turn hands. So I've got a clear bet for 160 pounds. He says he didn't get there. He snap folds. And I am up 345 pounds after just a couple hours of grinding running really well so far but that's going to do it for the 2-5 with a straddle we're going to go all the way over and play 10-25 now bigger game really excited to play it i make the move across and unlike last time it's not going to be short-handed we've got a full game i won 410 pounds in the 2-5-10 game gonna reset the tracker back to zero for this one and start fresh for the bigger game first hand of note in the new game i've got pocket tens on the button the cutoff is a pro he raises to 60 pounds and i put in the re-raise to 200 pounds the small blind is also a pro. He's going to cold call this three bet and the original razor makes the call as well. We go three ways to ace seven three with a flush draw. Really don't love that ace out there. But when it checks me, I do decide to see about my hand. I bet 210 pounds. After a few seconds, the small blind makes the call and the original razor gets out the way. Heads up to the turn. It's the deuce of diamonds. My opponent checks to me and I don't think there's anything else we can do here other than just check it back. The river is another deuce front door flush misses. And once again, my opponent checks. X. Same as the turn. I think we've got a very clear check back here. It's too strong to bluff, too weak to value bet, so I check it on back. My opponent turns over pocket queens. A little surprised to see that the small blind's got this hand here. I thought he would cold four bet this hand, but to be honest, for me, it felt like he had pocket jack, so I guess it all works out the same. Not off to the best of starts in this new game, and it is a lot tougher, but it does feel like an online game to me. I'm going to play the way I would play online. Just like in this next hand, I am in the big blind with seven six of diamonds. A reg in the hijack is raised to 50 pounds and I put in the three bet to 250 pounds he's gonna make the call we go heads up to the flop which is king jack five no flush draw for me no backdoor flush draw no straight draw but it's a pretty good board for my range so I bet out for 175 pounds I am going to have to continue to barrel on a three a four a six a seven and eight I'm ready for it if it comes but he just folds his hand really nice to take this pot down with seven high I'm gonna take a little break here head out stretch my legs and when I come back I have to post 25 pounds in the cutoff middle position is going to raise to 75 pounds and i look down at king six of spades i wouldn't normally call here but we've got 25 invested anyway so i decide to go ahead and make a bit of a loose call here the button's not too aggressive we've got a fun player in the small blind so i don't expect any player behind to squeeze on me here i make the call we go heads up to the flop which is 10 9 6 with two clubs and one diamond my opponent checks to me and I check it on back. The turn is the king of clubs, which does give me two pair, but it also does complete some straight and flush draws. But then again, the original razor is checked to me again. So I think we've got a clear bet for value here. I bet 130 pounds. I'm a little surprised as he reaches for four orange chips and puts in the check raise to 400 pounds. Still though, I've got two pair. I can call the turn and see what happens because I'm in position, which is what I decide to do. The river is an also seven, not the greatest river in the world, but my opponent checks. And as he does so, he does it quite 
quite sheepishly. I don't think I can bet my hand for value and I'm pretty sure I'm good here. So I just announced two pair and he says two pair is good. Again, I could make him show and get that information, but I rarely play here. What am I going to do with that information? I think it's just nice to be nice. I'm back in profit for this new game here up 370 pounds. Next up, I'm in the small blind with pocket eights. The button is a local pro. He raises to 60 pounds and I put in the re-raise to 250 pounds. Big blind gets out the way, but the button makes the call. We go heads up to the flop and it is the worst flop imaginable for my pocket eights. It comes down ace, king, queen with a flush draw. Still, this is a decent enough board for my reign so I bet out for £140 and he makes the call. The turn is an offsuit 9 and I don't think my hand wants to bluff. Honestly I'd blast off here if I had pocket jacks or pocket 10s but pocket 8 is just a little too weak so I checked my opponent. He bet £600 and I just let my hand go. It's a bit of a slow start for me in this new game but the action is going to absolutely pop off starting with this king queen suited not long later. Under the gun is raised to £50. He's a bit of a tight player so I decide to just flat call this king queen suited in the cutoff and then the small blind is going to put in the squeeze to a hundred pounds it is literally a min raise under the gun makes the call and i think i have to just call as well we go three ways to king 10 7 with two clubs and one diamond the original squeezer is going to bet out for a hundred pounds under the gun is going to call really not sure what to do here i guess we can raise and kind of see where we're at but i decide to just call three ways here to the turn it is the eight of diamonds the original razor is going to keep betting here he bets out for 500 pounds but he bets out in a very specific way he sort of pushes it towards the preflop aggressor kind of aggressively the preflop aggressor is going to get out the way and i don't love it here but i think we have to call in position and kind of see what happens on the river i make the call the river is the deuce of diamonds flush completing river and he now moves all in for 1200 pounds exact same way he bet the turn really quite aggressively and spreads it out in front of him i'm really not sure what to make of this i'm looking at the guy trying to pick up a read whilst i'm deep in the tank i'm worried about the min race preflop and the blasting into two players He's also looking away from the table, checking his phone, drinking water, but looking very calm as he does so. If a recreational player does these things but looks nervous, they're bluffing, but this dude looks super calm. So after a couple of minutes in the tank, I announce the word fold. The letter F is barely out my mouth before he turns over ace queen. He windmills it across the table at me. This is a very, very sick bluff. I'm so gutted. I came so close to calling, but in the end I said, nah, Gaz, come on, be disciplined and lay your hand down. This is hand one of carnage and hand two occurs. 10 minutes later, I've got king 10 of diamonds on the button and raised to 75 pounds. The big blind is the guy who bluffed me in the last hand. Quick side note, he's drinking gin straight. Really lovely guy, kind of quiet, didn't speak much, but very pleasant when spoken to. He's going to make the call and we go heads up to Jack, 10, 9, all diamonds. I've got second pair, a gut shot to the straight and a gut shot to a straight flush as well. The big blind is going to lead into me here for £100 and I decide to just call. The turn is an offset three, nothing really changes and he leads into me again for £150. Really not sure what else to do here other than just call. The river is an offset deuce, nothing changes and he bets again for £300. This is a bit of a gross spot. At the end of the day, I've only got second pair but I do block straights, I block flushes so I do decide decide to make the call. He turns over his hand. He's got ace 10 offsuit without a diamond. This is an absolute ownage second pair value bet on the wettest board of all time. I cannot beat this guy. I have to muck my hand and now I am down 1800 pounds, but that could all change when I look down on the button here at ace king. Under the gun is raised to 70 pounds and I decide to flat call on the button here. We can of course three bet, but versus an under the gun raise, we're allowed to flat on the button sometimes with ace king. And I want to play with this guy who is owning me in the big blind. The big blind is going to make the call. We go three ways to the flop. It is ace six for all clubs. I've got top pair, nut flush draw, great start. Under the gun is going to see bet for 60 pounds. We can for sure raise here, but I want to let the big blind continue if he's got like a random nine of clubs type hand. So I just make the call. The big blind is going to make the call as well. We go three ways to the turn, which is an offsuit eight. Now, the way that he leads out here is really similar to how he led out when he had ace queen. He sort of sprays it in front of him towards the preflop aggressor. I'm keeping this in mind as the preflop aggressor folds. I've got top pair, top kicker, nut flush draw. So I, of course, make the call, praying for a club on the river to make my life really easy but it's a board pairing six. And once again, this guy is going to lead out in the same way. The only problem here is he's leading out for 2,600 pounds. 
It is a massive, massive overbet. I am really, really not sure what to make of this. It is identical behavior to the way that he was when he was bluffing. Is he doing this on purpose? He's quite drunk. Is he aware that he could be leading out in a certain way and then like replicating when he's got a bluff? Is he balancing his tells? I really don't know. I do have a nice hand to call with. I block the nut flush. I've got an ace at the end of the day. And this guy is also acting the same way that he acted a few minutes ago when he was bluffing. So I decide to make the call. He turns his hand over. He's got pocket eights without a club. He has kind of one outered me on the turn here and got absolutely maximum value. This is so painful. All I can do is tap the table and say, yeah, that'll do it. Nice hand. I am absolutely stunned. He was acting the same way as he was when he was bluffing. I really didn't think he was doing it for the reverse tell. Maybe he was. Maybe he's just balanced as fuck. This is a massive overbet resulting in a £6,400 pot, and I have been absolutely owned. What's worse is I'm now out of chips after this hand, so I have to slither away to the cash desk to take more money out of my player bank. I get myself back to the table, and just after a few hands, I'm in the big blind. I look down at the ace of spades. Instead of looking at the second card, I decide to shuffle them instead of looking at the other one. Unfortunately, every player at the table folds. I get a walk in the big blind holding an ace. I'm about to turn the other one over. Oh, I'm scared to see those I'm scared to look at the other one. Uh, let's see. Oh! <laughs> I'm not running the best now. <laughs> this is so painful. Let somebody else have Ace King one time. Everything that you've just seen, the last few hands have all happened in a 30 or 40 minute window. And after it's all said and done, all the tells, reverse tells, bad beats, 6,400 pound pots, the guy in question picks up his chips, wishes us all well, and heads to the cashier. Now, this is all completely fine. He's well within his rights to do this. He can do whatever he wants. I'm not one of these players that's like, oh, you want a big pot off of me, you got to let me try and win my money back. He's well within his rights to leave. But it's really painful for me because I now know that the game is going to break and I've got no chance of winning anything back. An insane last hour or so to finish. My winning streak in London is well and truly over. The game does eventually slowly break and I've got to head to the cashier a little stunned, if I'm honest, before heading out into the cold London early morning. All right, guys, we're all done. Uh, I'm shell-shocked at those last couple of hands. I've never been so old in my life that guy absolutely ruined me i thought the first time was a pretty good fold and then the second one same mannerism same betting pattern same like looking away drinking i thought long and hard about them both and i was wrong for both of them um what can you do look i had a lot of fun hopefully you guys enjoyed the show i lost 5900 pounds total in the bigger game 5500 for the night it's not the end of the world in a game like that i really hope you guys have enjoyed it if you could click the sub button to ease my pain a little bit i'd be grateful until next time youtube take it easy